Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. Pastor Wilkins chasing our history and the sons of Yah. Pastor Wilkins chasing our history and the sons of Yah. We have this pandemic called COVID. You got T.D. Jakes and the major black pastors telling you to take this vaccine. It's, it's spiritual malpractice for me as a pastor to encourage you to take this vaccine based on history. It is spiritual malpractice for me as a pastor to tell you to take this vaccine merely based on history. I don't have to have any type of medical experience to tell you something ain't right, something's wrong. I wouldn't do that if I was you. What are you basing all that on, Pastor Wilkins? I can go all the way back to slavery. I can go all the way back to Dr. Mary, uh, J. Marion Sims. Who was he? He was an OBGYN doctor. What was, what was Dr. Sims doing, Pastor Wilkins? He was performing experiments on the female slave concerning her uterus, her private parts, using no pain medicine. It was in the, it was still in the law of medicine until about the late eight, uh, 1980s where they took that phrase out of their books, their medical books that said black people could tolerate more pain than anybody. This doctor figured out he believed through illegal experiments and torture of our people in the middle 1800s, Dr. Sims, a OBGYN doctor, performing these excruciating, inhumane surgeries on black women, slave women, during slavery. Many of them died, many of them were mangled, Many of them were mentally messed up because the pain was so great that they was never the same. This same doctor's research is still in the book of medicines. In the book of medicine, under Dr. Sim, he was writing in the book of medicine that black people could have a higher pain tolerance than white people. Medicine was literally broken down based on this perception. So the white man could go get pain medicine that was far more potent for pain than you would get as white people, black people. So doctors would prescribe formulas based on this theory that black people could endure more pain than white people because we was not technically human. So we, we could endure it greater because our, we was not technically a human being, is what the doctor was saying. Clearly, the medical field in America believed that because this was actually in the book of medicine until the middle of uh, 1918 when this comes out of the book of medicine. But until then, it was believed that black people could endure more pain than white people. So guess what? Doses of medicine were different. So what you was getting as medicine and what the white man was getting as medicine was not the same thing. We still see that today. They will prescribe a medicine greater for a white person than they do a black person. How you know that, Pastor Wilkins? You ever notice that pain medicine is hooking white folks? They're being hooked to opioids and you're not? 
You know why they're being hooked to, hooked to opioids and you're not? Because the medical field has a perception, a mental perception, that they need a greater dosage than you need. So now you're starting to see a lot of white people being hooked to opioids and pills that you're not being hooked to because you're not getting that level of pain medicine. I'm trying to show you this truth. Prove it, Pastor Wilkin. Again, Dr. Marion Sims is our proof. He was a doctor when? In the middle of the 1830s. 1830, he was born. He died in like 1883. So we know around in the area of 1860 to 83, he's performing these excruciating surgeries on the female body parts of the slaves. He's doing it to advance medicine to benefit white folk. Wait a minute, that's racist, Pastor. Think about it. He's performing this on slaves. At this time, your property. So he's not performing this to benefit you. He's performing it to benefit the white race. This is actual history. So we know that the medical field will do things to black people to benefit the white race when it comes to medicine. Let me show you examples of that. I don't want to be labeled as a racist, so I'll show you history. You ever notice how the Surgeon General has on the back of cigarettes a warning label that cigarettes are dangerous to your health? You ever notice that? And who do you think is being affected by cigarettes, smoking cigarettes the most, and cancer killing them? White folk. But you ever notice there is no warning label on pork at all? And we know pork is the number one killer of our people. It causes more problems. Pork and salt causes more problems to our people than any other race. But yet you don't see no Surgeon General warning on salt, you don't see no Surgeon General warning on no pork, and pork and salt is more deadly than cigarettes. But yet you see a Surgeon General warning on cigarettes. Why? Them as white folk die. But pork and salt, them as black folk getting these medical conditions. Black folks lives are reduced through pork and salt. So what do you have? You have lobbyists right in washington that make sure that there's no warning labels on these things on these products because it's, it's killing our people what did the government do when, when when they found out that strong pain medicine was causing addiction now we have an opioid crisis and they funnel money to that there's no money funneled to folk who's dying of high blood pressure and all these other things based on pork. If the, if the Surgeon General said, let us put a warning label, label on pork, let us put a warning label on salt, the black race would hesitate and probably pull away from those things. But yet we are freely diving into our own depth when it comes to pork and salt. It's causing a major problem. And the, and the, the, the medical field the medical com community knows that the death rate and the health problems of black people based on pork and salt is staggering. They know this. So they have one view for our people's health versus white people's health. Right now, white people, white women are blessed because they was experimenting on black women in slavery to advance medicine for white people. Pastor, that's a racist statement. Then you just, something's wrong with your thinking capacity. Sla somebody say slavery. Slave women. Their property. So why would they care if this surgery, this experimenting is killing black women? We have history of botched experiments performed on our people all throughout American history. We have history from slavery, we have Tuskegee, Alabama. These folks knew for 40 years they were experimenting on our people. Hear this. They knew this. And they knew that the experiment was going wrong. 
And I got some bad news for you. Y'all just think somehow they just said, we need to stop this. We had civil rights in 1965. This experiment goes on until 1972, and it could be going on still today if it wasn't for the Associated Press that gets wind of it. But it's already been happening for 40 years. When they find out about it around 1970, it's been happening for 40 years because it started in 1932. That's a long time to be experimenting on a people. What kind of mindset is that? What kind of humanity is that? And what is happening in that 40 year period? 1966, the Animal Welfare Act. Hear this, it banned what? Met the medical field for practicing what? Cruel surgeries and experiments on animals. Think about that. This is protecting animals six years before the Tuskegee experiment stops six years think about that and it doesn't stop because they have a conscience it only stops because the associated press is blowing the whistle the press don't get involved that's that could still be going on today so you have to ask yourself respect yourself as a black person td jakes is a liar td jakes is wrong Every black pastor that's pushing you with this is irresponsible, totally irresponsible because it's wrong. And here's what they'll tell you. Well, they'll start quoting these scriptures in foolishness. It's foolish, understand me. We have history from slavery until now. Okay, the war on drugs, let's look at it. Let's look at the mindset of America and let's be honest, we need pastors that care about our people. The war on drugs was this. This is how that thing played out. Okay, cook crack cocaine would get you a long sentence. Hear this, but who was in on pushing that sentence? The man that's in the office right now. But here's what Negroes don't wanna do. They don't wanna, they don't wanna kill all the roaches. They only like killing certain color roaches. So who else was in on that experiment? Who else was, I mean, who else was in on that crime bill that extended your time versus white people's time? That Freemason you call Charlie Rangel, that, that, that your representative in New York City. And where was this affecting the most? New York City. So what happened? Joe Biden had a certain amount of, uh, and the Congress had legislation on sentencing laws. Well, what did this hypocrite you call Charlie Rangel do? He said it wasn't long enough. The prison term wasn't long enough. A black man. He said the prison term wasn't long enough. Go back and look at the crime bill of Joe Biden, which Joe Biden was wicked with that bill. But what took it to steroid levels when it comes to the sentencing part? Charlie Rangel, that black free mason, said that you're not offering enough time. So now what do we understand about drugs and a crime bill? Cook crack cocaine is a longer sentencing than what? Powder cocaine. So they did it on a ratio what? Divide. Why? Who's more subject to cook cocaine? Black people. Who's more subject to powder cocaine? Rich white people hear that there's people in political offices that do powder cocaine but they had an ally called charlie rango and they said well he's black so it can't be racist because he agrees with us this has always been our problem he's black so it can't be racist so he agrees with us okay the surgeon general even as i speak he's black but yet there is no warning label on pork that says the dangers of what it does to the black man's body. Pork and salt are the leading causes of our health coming to a demise. But yet there's a warning label on cigarettes. Why? Because white people, they get what? Sick off of cigarettes disproportionately more than black people. 
So we see the Tuskegee experiment and it took the Associated Press to reveal this cruelty and they had the nerves to have a what? Animal Welfare Act as this experiment's going on. What did that Welfare Act say? You cannot perform cruel experiments on animals. So they was literally saying you was beneath an animal as they performing the Tuskegee experiment. Hear that? This is what less than 70 years ago. We're talking 50 something years ago when it ended. Now, they telling you to take this vaccine. Any responsible pastor is obligated to say to you, consider Dr. Marion Sims, who was what? the father of the OBGYN. And what did he write in his journals? He said he found that the black specimen could endure more pain than white people. This has been a belief in the medical community until they took it out of the medical books in around 18, 1985. So they would give you pain medicine based on that statement from this Dr. Sims. So now you get pain medicine that is not equivalent, equivalent to white people's pain medicine. That's why you see the opioid, opioid problem with white people and they're more addicted than we are because they get a stronger dosage. They get a different type. What I'm trying to get you to understand is different type. The Surgeon General, views their health as a different type. That's why there's a warning label on cigarettes that's not on pork and salt. It's a mindset of a different type. So is it impossible to believe that they are taking one vaccine and you're going to take another vaccine? Is that impossible to believe? And then when you start talking about the studies, you have to break down what? Who was the studies performed on to get this vaccine? And it's disproportionately white people were doing the studies that says this vaccine is safe. There's a problem with that. We have melon. We know that pork has divided, has what? Torn up our bodies because of our melon. Salt has torn up our bodies because of our melon. So the medical community knows that if they make a vaccine and they using the research on white people, it could be deadly as pork to us because of our melon. There's a different standard for us because we have melon in our bodies. Understand that. So when even when you start talking about uh, healthcare products, soaps and all these other things that we can't deal with. Like if you take our people's, their certain deodorant soaps we can't handle because it what? It's against the melon in our body. The melon in our body is a what? Special ingredient that is found in us. We also know of what? We know of history where they would take our organs and they would, what would they do? Let me tell you something I witnessed. I witnessed this. I had a nurse, a young man was shot in, over in Louisville. He's bleeding out. She tells me, she said, Pastor Wilkins, I believe they could have saved his life. She said, but the emergency doctor said this, put him over in the corner and let him bleed out. This is not new. And there's Pete pastors like T.D. Jakes them. When you're a pastor, you are you privy to a lot of information that happens in the community. And there's pastors like P.T.D. Jakes them that know I'm telling the truth. There are medical doctors under the mindset. When that black young male comes into the hospital, put him in the corner and let him bleed out. Hear this. That's how they think. This is how the medical community thinks. Put him in the corner and let him bleed out. That's not just the medical com community. This is the cycle. This is the cycle mind of America. This is the psychology of America. What do you mean, Pastor Wilkins? Why is it they don't have some type of bills to stop all that black on black crime up in Chicago? Why? Because for the mere fact is you killing you. This has been the thinking of America 
ever since we've been here. Your life don't have the value of other lives. So when you take in that needle, it's not based on your life has equal value. Let's run it down again. We know Dr. Sims around 1860 is performing experiments on the females, what? On her uterus to find what? Certain cures for white women in what? The years of slavery. Well, maybe he was doing it to help the black woman too. She's property. Why would he care? He's not giving her any type of pain medicine. They didn't have pain medicine back then. Well, that's a lie. I was on a plantation and we, there's a plant on a plantation that the slaves produced pain medicine from. And what happened? The slave masters took that pain medicine because a lot of us don't know. Pain medicine was invented by the slaves. I can put up the picture of the plant that reduces the pain in the bone of the tooth. I'll put that picture up today. I got it on a slave plantation. I'm telling you what I know because I chase our history and I get this type of information. I either get it cause of my research or there's a historian that I'll teach him something he don't know and he'll teach me something I don't know. So this is why I go on these slave plantations cause I'll teach him something he don't know. I taught us, I taught a historian how a slave escaped a plantation. Did a video on it on the plantation and I showed you how that slave escaped. The historians came to me and said, we couldn't figure that out. And it's because they didn't have the knowledge of the wade and the water theory of the secret codes of the slaves. When the slaves were singing wade in the water, it was to warn the next plantation that a slave is downstream. And when he's downstream, he cannot be detected by what? The dogs cannot detect his scent. So we know that he was in the wade in the water creek. So now you have to go on the plantation and figure out which creek would be the best creek to throw off a dog scent. I showed them that. Once I showed them that, then they started teaching me some stuff out of respect. So then they take me to this plant and they tell me that the slaves invented the pain medicine and they show me the plant, what the slaves used to invent the pain medicine. Hear this. So now we understand that we don't even get privy to the medicine that our ancestors left for us. Hear that. Now understand, let's go through history. Let's walk through it again any respectable, reasonable pastor. Hear this, they would tell you, it's not good that you take that shot. There's reasons why. We have, a, we have history that said so, and who did they do the test studies on? It's very few black peoples they did the test study on. Hear that, it's like, it's like, uh, um, it's like when you got lung cancers and all these other cancers, there's different types of blood thinners. Well, there's certain blood thinners that will kill us because it will cause blood clots in our blood that it won't cause in white people's blood, like heparin. Okay, heparin's not off the market. You don't know that heparin causes blood clots in black people, but yet the, the doctors and the medical community knows that many of our people have developed blood clots from what? Heparin. What is heparin? It's a blood thinner. It's still on the market and it causes blood clots in black people. Hear that. Now, what do we understand? Let's go through the history again. I'm gonna tell you why T.D. Jakes and them are liars and I'm calling them out as flat out liars who don't, who don't care about their people. Because if I'm going to tell you anything, I need to have some type of precedence to make sure I'm giving you proper information. So we know in the 1860s, Dr. Marion Sims was performing OBGYN surgeries and experiments on black people, black women. It was not to help the black woman cause she was property. Hear that, what they seen her at was a little higher level than a monkey cause she's the closest thing to human that they seen and they knew white women were having problems 
in their ovaries. But most of all, when midwives were delivering their babies, a lot of white babies were dying and the midwives were who? Black slave women. Who are the midwives of America? Who are the famous midwives you never hear about? Black slave women. There are black slave women that have delivered more than 100 to 200 children and they're lost and losing a child. The rate is less than 3%. They were that good. Hear this. So what happened? Now they understand that we need to do an experiment to find out how the ovaries in the white woman is disproportionately affected to where they're having problems that the black woman's not having. What did they do? They started examining the black woman's ovaries to see the difference between their ovaries and the white woman's ovaries. Dr. Sims did this. You know, the father of the GB. The G, I mean, the OBGYN, he's the father of OGBYN. That's who he is. Now, he writes in his journals that he discovered that black people had a higher pain tolerance than white people. This is what he writes in his journal. So he's not giving them anything to prevent their pain. Hear this. So what does he do? He does these studies on black women over a couple of decades with no pain medicine. He's experimenting and doing studies so that he can advance what? Medicine for white women. Pastor, he was probably trying to help black women too. When do you hear that I keep telling you that our people were property? So why would he be trying to help black women that he don't even see as human? All he's seen was an experiment. This is not unnormal in slavery. Many medical experiments were done on slaves that advance the medicine that you see right now. Why? Because they seen you as a form of animal. I was on a slave plantation where they admit to me that the house slaves were called pets. They were the second pet. The first pet was the dog and the house slave was the second pet. So I'm in this slave, uh, slave master's home and they telling me there's a pillar at the foot of the children's bed. So what's going on is the pet got to sleep in the room with the pill, with the with the children or the master. But the woman, the black slave woman that cared for the children and the master while he's sick, they laid in the hallway on a wooden floor with a blanket with no pillow. This is what was going on. This is why I chase our history. I'm telling you first hand knowledge. So I'm sitting on a slave plantation and we're talking about Dr. Sims. And they, they was letting me know he's not the only person that was performing experiments on the slaves. And then they had life insurance on those slaves. So he didn't have a restriction as far as the experiment. If he killed the slave, the slave master would get life insurance through MetLife and other companies. See, there's a lot of stuff you don't know because they're not going to tell you why because a lot of what you know about slavery is based on the UDC. Who are the UDC? The United Daughters of the Confederacy wrote your philosophy of slavery until 1860, until 1985. And what was happening as they were writing? This stuff was in your history classes. This stuff was in your university. The same with the philosophy of that Dr. Sims, that black people's pain tolerance was higher than white people. And he was basing it off of those horrific Think what experiments he was performing on black women hear this today you're talking to the brother that's on these plantations i'm telling you actual proof so now we know that he was taking these surgeries and experiments to try to what figure out how to cure the white woman's ob the, the white woman's uterus and if you look at history today white people the white woman's uterus is jacked up they always got a problem with their cells that black people don't have. But what he could not understand was the midwives were gifted at what? Delivering children. I dare you to do a study on midwives during slavery. You're gonna be shocked. They were better than the doctor themselves. Who did the slave masters call for high fever? The, the what? The midwives. Those women, why? Our people always had some form of cure. They was trying to figure out. Let me show you something they did. 
they used to pull out the slave teeth and they would study them to figure out why white the slaves teeth were so much whiter than the white man's teeth and why their teeth are lasting in their mouth longer than the teeth were lasting in the mouth of the white man so what do we know pastor do you have proof of that the teeth i showed you on facebook are slave teeth that was sitting in george washington's mouth it's on display where up at Mount Vernon. So what do we know? I was at Mount Vernon. I stood at the tomb of the first president of the United States of America. I go down this hill, less than 300 feet from him is a slave graveyard. In that slave graveyard is the bodies of babies less than two years old. What were they doing? Experiments. Hear this. You have always been the research that has birthed American medicine. Understand that. Understand that. So this is the mindset of America all the way back in the 1800s. Why would that change right now today? Why would you take that vaccine? Why would you look at all this history? The Tuskegee experiment, 1966, the Animal Welfare Act. You cannot perform cruel experiments on animals and the Tuskegee experiment is still going on. And there's absolutely no federal bill to protect you. Hear that, hear this this morning. So if this is the mindset and we have history after history why is it that opioids in mass numbers is, a, is addicting white people versus black people? Because they've been getting a higher dosage of pain medicine. Hear this. The, the what? Medical community. The medical community totally believes that black people's pain tolerance is higher. That's why opioids is affecting white people. They getting the real stuff Why your stuff is generic because they feel that you can endure the pain because they have a doctor who is their world famous doctor. He's called the doctor of medicine, Dr. Sims. And he said through his experiments, cruel experiments of the female body parts that they can endure more pain. So guess what the medical field has been thinking since then? Don't give them the same dosage for pain that you give white people. And now we are starting to see the chickens come home to roost. Why? What's the problem? Oh, a Trump had to sign a bill to pass certain laws for what? For opioid addiction. Hear this. Why? Because they are being addicted to that potent medicine that you're not getting. The only way you're getting that potent medicine if it's being sold through street pharmaceuticals. Hear that. What is that? pill popping drug dealers that's how you get it but you've never had the medicine that the white man has had all throughout the history of america because even though in 8, 1985 they take that out of the medical books they still mentally believe that they still mentally believe that so now we at the doctors have performed medicine on black people. We also know that they have a surgeon general warning for cancer. Cigarettes can cause cancer, but who's, who's more likely to have cancer? White folks. So now there's a surgeon general warning. Yet there is no surgeon general warning for how bad pork is to black people, how bad salt is to black people, because you don't understand the medical field's thinking. They see a specimen, a study to advance the world through the Negro body. That's why they pull melon out of your body when you die at a young age. That's why the doctor told that nurse to let that young black man lay over there in the corner and bleed out. Why? Because after he bleed out, we're going to pull his melon. They don't mind the war, the, the, the black on black crime. Why? Because the melon is great in young black males. So when we killing each other, they taking your butt to the morgue, they pulling your melon out of you, they're studying your melon, and they're trying to find cures based on your melon. 
That's why they don't mind in Chicago, black on black crimes. That's why there is no, no laws trying to stop black on black crime because your death is more valuable to America. Your body is more valuable in experiment than any other body in American history. You have melon. Melon can cure a lot of stuff. They know this. So when that young black male, the nurse tells me, she said, Pastor Wilkins, she said, that doctor, that emergency doctor told us to roll him over to the corner and let him bleed out. And this is not new. They let all your young black males be rolled over to the corner and bleed out because your blood equals their melon. Hear this, hear this. Why is that, that melon important? Because you have folks over in Jerusalem right now that are second in the world in skin cancer. Why? Because the earth don't agree that they are the people of that land. That's why they lead, they second in the world in skin cancer. So what do they need? They need your melon to produce certain type of what? Rays, some certain type of lotions to block the sun. UV rays, they need your melon. And guess what's in a lot of lotion that you'll never hear? Your melon. Because they figured out black folks can walk around in the sun. Who was the sun worshipers? Where did sun worshiping come from? The Egyptians could worship the sun for hours and days because of their skin color. But yet those same Greeks would have to run into what? The inside of places where they were covered from the sun. If you go, if you study right now Israel, you'll see that they always got their skin covered up. They always got on a hat. Because what? The earth is telling the truth about that lie of who the people of that land is. There's only one type of people that was created for that land, and it's a people of melon. So let's run this down by history, and I'll show you why T.D. Jakes them are false prophets. O-B-O-B-G-Y-N, Dr. Sims, the mid-1800s, is performing experiments on female slaves, their uterus, their private parts, and they're trying to find out why our pri her private parts are more advanced and in, are, are more uh, uh, more of a physical specimen than the white woman. The white woman's trying to have children, their children are dying. The black woman's having children and they're making it. So they're trying to figure out what is it about that black woman's uterus that is allowing them to be so different than what? The white woman. And what did he say in his journal as he's doing these experiments? He found in his research that black people's pain tolerance is far above the white man's pain tolerance. That's what he writes. This is actually in the book of medicine until like 1985 when they removed it. But by then the medical field already has a mental philosophy that black people can endure more pain than white people. So what are they doing? They giving you watered down medicine and they giving the white man the potent stuff. And so what's happening? And you see the chickens come home to roost. Pastor Wilkins, you can't be lying. Why? Because who's addicted to opioids? So why are they getting the same medicine we getting? They addicted and we're not. Yours is diluted and theirs is the real stuff. Hear that. And that real stuff is addicting them to it as where well, you still got pain three and four hours later, they walking around on Mars. Hear this. So now what happened? They become street pharmaceuticals. So now you get addicted. A few of us get addicted. Why? Because we getting the real stuff. We getting the real Xanax. You know, the, the little yellow bars that you've never got while you was in the hospital that they got heavy doses of? We getting the real Xanax now. So now what is the real Xanax doing? It's putting your butt to sleep for many hours. If you talk to the drug community, they will tell you one of the best pills to take to knock your butt out is potent yellow bar Xanax. And they are not cheap in the streets. Hear that. Now, let's understand this. So now we understand that this doctor puts in his journal of medicine that black people can intolerate pain on a way higher level than white people. So what does he do? He keeps operating, he keeps experimenting on what? The female body. 
on the black slave's body. And he's, she's not considered to be human, so he has no conscience. Well, guess what? America still don't see you as human, so they don't have no conscience. That's why the RN doctors tell you, roll the black body over there and let it bleed out. Why? There's something to gain. When that young black male, he's only 22, 23 years old, his melon is strong. It's pure. His melon is as pure as it can be. It's no dilution of anything in that young man's melon because his organs are strong. So now leave him over in the corner because we're about to pull his melon and we're going to send it to Israel so that they can survive because now they're going to put that same melon in lotions and different type of skin UV ray products because we understand the black man's melon will keep them in the sun. And those folks ain't trying to leave Israel. So they need something from us to stay in Israel because it's our land. Y'all not hearing me. So now we see that they've been doing this since 1860s. They've been experimenting on us. And then we come to the Tuskegee experiment. See how we keep going? But let's move away from there real quick. Let's go back into slavery and what I, I witnessed for myself. So I'm at this slave plantation and there's a drawer in this room. And I'm asking the, the administrative staff, I said, what is that drawer for? And they said, in that drawer is the teeth of the slaves. I said, the teeth of the slaves? And she says, yes. Yeah. She said, if the slave master's children wanted that slave's teeth, then we would pull them out of their mouth because the slave's teeth, for some reason, were much whiter than the white man's teeth. That's what they were telling me. I started doing research. Come find out the slave's teeth were much whiter than the white man's teeth. So the children were, uh, they were fascinated with the beauty of the whiteness of the teeth. And these were like to them, they were like souvenirs. And so a slave could have their teeth yanked out at any time if a child wanted that souvenir. So we know we've been going through with the medical community from slavery until now. Now we move past that and we at that old Tuskegee experiment. You hear all the stories about it stopped in uh, 1972. It actually didn't stop. They went underground and kept doing it. It didn't really stop. Uh, I'm, we'll leave that alone, but there's a lot of you on here that knows it didn't stop. Some of y'all are from families that know it didn't stop in 72. Some of y'all are literally sitting on here and you're from families that know the Tuskegee experiment did not stop in 72. And what happened? It was the, the Associated Press that brought it into the open because they wasn't going to stop it. They had no reason within their thinking to stop it because they seen you still as property so they didn't feel like they was doing anything wrong. Now, understand what happened in 1966. This ought to infuriate you. There's two questions I would ask you when you listen to T.D. Jakes now. How effective was our civil rights if that bill's passed in 1965 and the Tuskegee experiment is still going on in 1972? What civil rights? When does the government comes in and say civil rights have been violated? Because the civil rights bill ain't worth a crap, period. It's never been worth a crap, period. That's why the FBI never finds out that your civil rights have been violated when the police kill you unarmed. Because that bill ain't worth the crap, period. It's nothing but a tingling sound, and, and that's all it is. It's a, it's a shiny brass and a tingling sound to get you to say, we got something. That's all it is. So now we're at 1966, and the white man is feeling a compassion for animals. Something's wrong with the way we treat animals in experiments. And what do they do? They passed the Animal Welfare Act of 1966, regulating the treatment of animals in research. That's what that bill did. You can no longer cruelty do research on animals. And here the Negro is still under the Tuskegee experiment. Are you serious? They're still, the animals protected in 1966, and the Negro is still under the Tuskegee experiment. Hear that. I don't think y'all listening. So then what do they do? They find out in the late 70s and 80s that cancer is killing white folk. Mm. So what do they do? They put a Surgeon General warning on the cigarettes and it takes off, it takes off in the 90s. But they knew in that same time period that pork is killing black folk. That, that salt is causing their high blood pressure. But you don't hear no Surgeon General warning telling you 
that pork is dangerous for the black man. Salt is dangerous for the black man. Why? Because the lobbying industry, what did the scripture say? For they formed a crafty counsel against you. The lobbying industry says, do not put that on there. Continue to let them eat it because the money we make off of those Negroes eating pork is in the billions. The money we make off of those Negroes sprinkling that salt is in the billions. Hear that. So then you look at all the uh, uh, products they produce for the human body. Their, 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 their hair products is not for us. Their deodorants is not for us. Y'all not hearing me because you're the forgotten specimen. The only thing you're worth to America when it comes to the medical field is your melon. That's it. Your melon. And why is your body a physical specimen? That's all they want to know. Why is the black NBA player running around looking like a superhero and can run a 4.3 and why the same white man is running a 5.2? They want to know why you are the why you so fast in track and field. Why you got a right hook that is more deadlier than any other nation's right hook in the boxing ring. They want to know why you can dance with such fluidity that nobody else can dance with. It's like you creating the music and the music's following your steps. They want to know all that about you. They want to know why you can stand in the sun from sun up to sundown and your body gets healthier standing in the sun. Because what? We know the sun will produce what? Vitamin D. And vitamin D is healthy for the black man's body. So you you can stand in the sun all day and you're getting healthy. They stand in the sun and cancer can begin to take place. And they warn them that, that certain, the sun can cause skin cancer. And then they make products to prevent it. But they don't warn you and give you products to offset pork and salt. Huh. So we see the OB, the OBGYN, Dr. Mar Marion, he had a, he, he's one of the first medical doctors that said the black man can endure pain. And guess what they did? They believed that from that moment until right now. If you listen to the researchers, they'll tell you that their studies are being done mostly on white folks. So they're trying to inject something in your black body based on a white person that don't have melon. I wouldn't take it. We, I don't know how many more chickens got to come to roost. The opioid it should be alarming how white folks are being addicted to pills that you take and that you're not addicted to because you're not taking the same pill. You're not taking the same pill is the truth. You're not taking the same pill, period. Do you actually think they would have a uh, uh, treatment for op opioids if black people were uh, addicted and white people were not? I know this sounds racist, but I'm telling you the truth about America. It's the truth. America knows it. The history is in front of you. The results are in front of you. So they getting addicted to opioids, but yet you're taking the same pill. Why you ain't getting addicted? Why is it that heparin blood thinners is causing blood clots in you that it's not causing in white people? So what are you saying when it's all said and done, Pastor Wilkins? You better not take that vaccine. If you do, <laughs> I wouldn't take it. Because what is the chances they giving you a different vaccine than the white man? Well, I'll say four things that says it's a great chance. Uh, Dr. Marion, that, Dr. Sims, that's a great chance based on Dr. Sims. The Animal Welfare Act of 1966 says it's a great chance according to that. The Tuskegee Experiment says it's a great chance. Uh, 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 it's a great chance according to that. Uh, the, the mere fact that white folks are being addicted to painkillers that you're not being addicted to is a great chance that they're giving you a different vaccine than they given the white people. They have the history of this malpractice based on race. They have the history. I'll tell you, there ain't but one thing if you want to know the truth, and this is secret society, they'll never tell you. The greatest gold in America is the melon in the black man's body. That is the greatest gold on the earth. The melon in black folks' body. Period. 
It is being studied even as we speak. It's been studied for more than a hundred years in secret labs. They have taken young black males who are in black on black crimes. They pull their melon and that melon has been studied for years. They even take that same melon and give it to them folks over in Jerusalem to protect them from the sun by putting it on their skin. What they don't know and what they will not admit because this is not their book. So they really don't believe in the Holy Scripts because they know it's not their book. But what they don't know, melons in a chosen people for a reason. So you see the sons of Shem and the sons of Ham have melon. And guess what winds up happening? Huh, we know the Greeks and the Gentiles are sun worshipers. They are fanatic about the sun. Sunday. They fanatic about the sun, but they have a problem. The sun don't like them. They like the sun, but the sun don't like them. Hear that. So how do you fix it? We got to get that mess out of that black man's body. Man, you talking crazy. Man, they stole your rap music. Come on. They stole your dance. They, t they stole your language. You came to America and you speak in English, but you speak in a slang language, and now they speak in it. They say nigga too. What's up, my nigga? They stole your language. So what's up, my nigga? They stole your language. They stole your music. They're running around the streets and you can hear in their car bumping, I ain't no killer, just don't push me. They stole your music. They got music playing after police. That's your music. They doing your dances. They doing your stuff. They wearing your style of clothes. Tupac's music is huge in the white community. Come with me, Hail Mary. You can hear them jumping down the street and they got bumping sound. They ain't listening to hard acid rock. They listen to pop. Y'all not hear me. They stole everything about you. Oh, but they have some moral decency not to touch your melon. Really? Nothing on the earth is more valuable than melon. And we have history that they steal from you. What are they going to Africa and do? They stole the minerals of Africa. The world is running right now off of Africa. Hear that? The minerals of Africa are running the world right now. And you get zero. The Global Initiative said if we allow the black man into this establishment and allow them to get a piece of this wealth, our wealth will decrease. That's what the Global Initiative said. Hear this. So what are you saying, Pastor? Uh, I'm going to tell you, T.D. Jakes is a fraud. He's a liar. T.D. Fakes ain't no good. Period. Because he ain't nothing but a boot-licking Negro. All these boot-licking Negroes that don't care nothing about your tomorrow, your child's tomorrow, and your future, and your children's children's tomorrow. Your problem is the black race that think they're Europeans. So what do you say? I'll never forget being at that hospital when that nurse told me, Pastor Wilkins, the doctor told us to move him over there in the corner and let him bleed out. There's melon to be gained from every young black on black crime. You don't see the system because you're just running around in it, period. If it was me, my recommendation, leave that vaccine alone. America has not proven to us yet that we should trust anything in the medical community. Zero. When you can pass a bill concerned about dogs, cats, rats being protected from cruelty in research, and you're performing cruelty on our people in Alabama through the Tuskegee experiment at the same time that thing goes through, it tells you that your civil rights ain't worth a crap and your life don't mean that of an animal. That's exactly the message you should draw from the medical community. And all you gotta do is look at the chickens coming home to roost. White folks are being addicted to opioids, yet we taking the same exact pills and they being addicted. Why? Stronger dose for pain.
I'll put up the pain medicine of the slaves when I come off of Facebook here in a minute. I think it's going to shock you. The slaves actually invented pain medicine, period. Without them, there is no pain medicine in America today. The slaves showed the European how to deliver children. There is study after study that proved the black slave midwives were far more advanced at giving life than the Europeans could ever imagine. And they found a gift in them, and then they got jealous through the medical community, and they outlawed what? The midwives. Hear that. Pastor Wolf is a chase in our history, the controversial brother, because I know a lot of y'all said he's tripping. Look at the chickens that come on the roost. Who's addicted to opioids? Why do they have a bill to, to treat opioid addiction? They don't have a bill to treat crack cocaine. Look at all you gotta do is look at look around you. Tell yourself the truth. And everything will come into place. Don't take the vaccine. Pastor Wilk is chasing our history and the sons of y'all. Be blessed. Amen.